In this video, let's talk for just a minute about negative exponents. Now, we're, we're pretty comfortable with the idea of an exponent. If you say something like 2 to the third power, then we understand that the exponent tells you how many times you're supposed to multiply the base times itself. So this one would be 2 times 2 times 2, a total of 3 times, and 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So 2 to the third is 8, of course. But what happens if you have something like 2 to the negative 3 power? You can't really multiply something by itself negative 3 times. That, that, doesn't make, that doesn't make sense. Well, here's how a negative exponents are defined. And there's a very good, solid mathematical reasons that this is the case, which we'll explain here in a minute. But it's defined x to the negative m is, is defined to be 1 over x to the positive m power. So what happens when you have a negative exponent like this? Your whole term moves to the denominator and then you have a positive exponent. Um, and then e even though I didn't write it, the opposite is also true. If you had 1 over something to a negative exponent, but the negative exponent was already in the denominator, then you would move it up to the numerator with a positive exponent. So no matter where it is, if it has a, a negative exponent, it'll either move from the numerator to the denominator and have a positive exponent, or vice versa from the denominator to the numerator and have a positive exponent. So anyways, um, this really helps us, right? Because it, now we know that two to the negative three is defined as one over 2 to the positive 3, which of course is 1 eighth. Not 8, but 1 over 8. So that, that's all very clear. Now, um, you may ask, well, well, Devin, can you justify that? Like, who, who decided that? Why, why is that even the case? Why, why does that even work? Well, um, without, without getting too technical, uh, let's, let's just look at a couple examples. What if we had x to the m times x to the negative m. And just go with me for a minute, because I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Um, by definition, from one of your earlier rules, this would be x to the m plus negative m, because if you have like bases, you can add the exponents, which would be x to the 0, right? Because m plus negative m cancel and leave you a 0. And x to the 0 equals 1. So I know that this quantity here must equal one. Well, just think about that. As long as x to the m or x to the negative m, as long as neither one of those are zero, then I'll ask you here in pink, what would x to the negative m equal then? Would it be fair to say that it's one over, right, one divided by x to the positive m? Yeah, I think that would certainly be the case because if, if these two guys are in fact equal, we can just solve for x to the negative m, and it's written in terms of x to the positive m. So that, that's a little bit of a justification as to why we can do that as long as these two terms are not zero. Okay, so let's, let's see how we do. Let's, um, let's try an example here. The most common thing you'll be asked to do with exponents, and especially with negative exponents, is to simplify various expressions. So here's an expression with constants and A's and B's and C's. Let's see how we do. So anything with a positive exponent is gonna stay put, and a negative exponent term is gonna change positions from numerator to denominator or vice versa. So here we'd have four. The A to the negative two would come to the denominator and become A to the positive two. So we'd have uh, a already, this is this a, times a to the positive 2. Uh, this b to the negative 3 in the denominator will come up to the numerator and become a positive 3. And then c to the fifth is already a positive exponent, so we'll leave it just like it is. So notice in my new expression, I have no more negative exponents. That's a great thing. Now let me just clean up the rest of it. We'd have 4b cubed divided by a times a squared, that would be a to the third times c to the fifth. So nothing else can be simplified, and I no longer have any negative exponents. 
Uh, now in the next couple of videos we'll continue to do a few more examples with negative exponents.